So today we got two insane speedsters going head to head. Sonic from the latest movie taking on Quicksilver from the X Men series. Who's coming on top? Let's find out. Sonic the Hedgehog is Sega's mascot, the hero of the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and is a hedgehog born with the ability to run insanely fast. Hence his name, but his lightning fast reflexes to match. Sonic can casually run at speeds that exceed 760 miles per hour, and as Maddie noted, his super speed even causes him to have a constantly high pulse rate, even when unconscious. He can move so fast that other moving objects, even things like bullets and missiles, appear to be absolutely frozen in time from his perspective, and he can move quickly enough to appear in multiple places from the human eye. Sonic can also curl himself up into a ball in order to spin attack those of his speed, create soft landings for himself. Sonic the Hedgehog also has electromagnetic powers linked to his emotional state. So when he feels extreme emotions like anger or determination, he starts to emit bright blue bioelectric energy. If he then releases his energy, well Sonic can unleash an electromagnetic pulse that can both strengthen his spin dash and cut off power to areas as large as the entire Pacific Northwestern US. Sonic also has some impressively high durability. Having survived a near point blank explosion caused by one of Robotnik's drones without any injury. So, as we got one corner, Sonic the Hedgehog. But, entering the ring, in the corner, well, it's the X Men speedster, Quicksilver. Peter Maximoff, also known as Quicksilver, is a mutant who was born at the ability of insane supersonic speeds. His speed allows him to move faster than normal human mind can even perceive. Be able to casually outrun the bullets fired by Pentagon guards at Wolverine, Professor X, and Magneto. Went on to rearrange those bullets before they could hit him. Then, seconds at the initial explosion of the X Mansion, Quicksilver was able to save dozens of people inside while simultaneously goofing off, all before the explosion reached its peak combustion. His accelerated speed also allows him to completely defy gravity, easily running up walls and across ceilings. Quicksilver's powers also accelerate his metabolic rate, allowing him to rapidly heal from injuries a lot quicker than a normal human. Like after being severely injured by Apocalypse, Peter is seen with crutches, but he managed to make a full recovery after just a day. Quicksilver's body is also enhanced to survive the impact of his speed, with his joints, bones, and muscles being superhumanly durable, and in fact his speed and the inertia, friction, and pressure that comes along with it absolutely no effect on Quicksilver. So, who wins? Well, let's break it down. Now, Sonic and Quicksilver are both two of the fastest heroes out there. In their movies, they were able to move so fast that bullets, missiles, and explosions just looked frozen in time from their perspective. Both of these guys looked relatively equal in speed. So, who would win in a fight? Well, today, that's we're going to find out. And the first thing we need to figure out is definitely who is the faster one out of these two. Let's just start off with Quicksilver. Now, Red Allen over at Wired wrote a great piece about just how fast Quicksilver was going in X-Men Apocalypse when he was clearing out the mansion from the explosion, so definitely go check that out if you want all the math and hard numbers. I'll link to it down below. I'm just going to be summarizing it here, though. So, first thing we need to figure out is how much time it took Quicksilver to save all those people. And to figure that out, you gotta look at the speed of the explosion, which comes out to an average around 6,000 meters per second. Let's just say that the distance of the explosion is around 100 meters. We really have no clue the X-Men's mansion is fictional, but we know that he took 21 trips back and forth as he saved all those kids. Of course, you also have to account for all the time he spent goofing off during those trips. Let's just say that's around 10%. Then you put in all those numbers, should I say Rhett put in all those numbers, and it comes out to be around 280 kilometers per second, or 174 miles per second for us Americans. Yeah, that's a whole lot faster than the speed of sound, but still way slower than the speed of light. You can also do the calculations for the Quicksilver scene in Days of Future Past in the Pentagon, but you're not going to find out he went exceptionally faster there. If anything, well, he was going slower. So, at the end of the day, Quicksilver is capable of moving somewhere in the range of Mach 800. 
Actually, it could be somewhere in the range of Mach I-50 to Mach 800, seeing as how different people have clocked and moving at different speeds in X-Men Apocalypse. But let's just give Quicksilver the benefit of the doubt and put him at Mach 800. So then what about Sonic? Well, like Quicksilver, Sonic is able to move so fast that it can appear in multiple places at the same time or cause bullets and missiles to freeze from a perception. So it's able to goof off while going at all these speeds, like when he played drums on the missiles. But I think one of his impressive speed showings was running from Green Hills, Montana to the Pacific Ocean and back in seconds. Now, Green Hills isn't actually a real town in Montana, so we don't know where it is in the state. But let's just assume it's on the western border, closest to the Pacific Ocean as you can get. That's around 480 miles, and Sonic had to run there and back in just 4 seconds. So he's clocking in at 240 miles per second, or Mach 1125. So already, Sonic is looking faster than Quicksilver. Then another one of Sonic's most impressive, yet least quantifiable showings, was when he ran around the baseball diamond. He ran so fast that he dug into the ground, and then generated so much electricity from his running that created an EMP that knocked out most all of the Pacific Northwest. Now, Sonic can generate this power even without running. He seems to be able to summon more power as he needs to, or as his emotions dictate. So it's not as if all the electricity was generated from friction, and I'm not really sure, but to quantify how much of it was his speed, or is just innate electrical energy? But that actually nicely leads me to my second point here. Because this fight isn't necessarily all about speed. Granted, it's a massive part of it, definitely the most important part of it, but there are other things to consider too. I mean, Sonic is a speedster, can move as fast as a speedster, but his body also generates a virtually unlimited amount of energy that can summon at will. Just a single quill contain enough energy to allow Eggman to keep pace with Sonic, until Sonic learned that it can control the energy even when it wasn't directly connected with him. Furthermore, I think the aura increases his speed, as it looks exactly like the boost aura, and surrounds him when he's really booking it. On top of that, Sonic's electrical aura should shock Quicksilver whenever they make contact, and it certainly has more than enough energy to harm him. Plus, whenever Sonic summons electricity, it seems to heal and re-energize him, as he goes from battered and bruised to fully restored after the final battle. Sonic's also a whole lot more agile than Quicksilver. This is not just a spin dash, it's also simply much more prone to spin, jump, and run at odd angles, run sideways along walls, or bounce off objects. And then Sonic's spin dash really packs quite a punch. He's destroyed cars, Jed, so definitely send Quicksilver flying. On the other hand, Quicksilver is able to injure Apocalypse with his punches, and actually send Apocalypse flying off his feet. So Quicksilver will be able to send Sonic flying too. Only difference is, Sonic's more durable, and he's proven he can take attacks much, much easier than Peter. Now, finally, there is the issue of Sonic's overconfidence, as he likes to mess around and goof off. But so does Quicksilver. He definitely doesn't take things too seriously, even in life or death situations. However, with that being said, I think they both will take this fight seriously. After Apocalypse, and seeing someone who can move at incredible speeds just like him, Quicksilver isn't going to want to risk anything. Then even Sonic will be more wary after Eggman proved he's able to keep pace with him. So, End of the day, who's coming out on top here? Well, I think it's gotta be Sonic. Which is honestly kinda shocking. Going into this fight, I thought for sure Quicksilver would come out on top. And while Quicksilver does have more skill and experience, I just really underestimated just how fast Sonic is. He's so fast. A whole lot faster than Quicksilver. And on top of that, he's more agile, more durable, He's even a stronger and more powerful attack of a spin dash. So yeah, Sonic's coming out on top with this one. Sonic wins. But what do y'all think? I would love to hear your thoughts. Sign off in the comments down below. Also be sure, the like button, subscribe button, and turn on notifications from the Fanco Army. And I will see y'all next time.